It is Saturday afternoon, pushing evening now. I'm getting ready to fumigate this strawberry field. Saturday afternoon is always the absolute best time because we don't work on Sundays, so there's nobody around. Um, and also, it seems like just everything dies off as far as traffic on the road and just everything gets slow by Saturday afternoon. So there's less people around and that's what we want. Um, I got a, still got a, I got a lot to do yet. I got to put my signs up um, and I got to hook all this up. So this is what I was speaking about in a, a prior video. Um, this is my infield injector. So I'm not gonna inject vape am down at the creek. I don't want this stuff anywhere near the creek. Um, I inject it at the site. For one reason, one of the reasons for that is I'm still watering all these other crops on the farm. I don't want this mess running through my irrigation system. And two, I just don't want this poison down at the creek. Um, that's just uh, a bad just seems like a bad idea so uh, what I've got here is everything I've got at the pump and actually if you're ever having trouble getting stuff to inject at your pump if you're pumping a long ways if you'll move your injector to the field uh, where you can have high pressure immediately have pressure drop going into the rows Sometimes you'll have more success. It's easier to inject fertilizer and chemicals that way But this is kind of a Hodgepodge mess that I put together out of pieces and parts I had laying around So it's a little bit ridiculous looking, but it don't matter um, I do have a backflow preventer here uh, Which is always a good idea. I have two back flow, flow preventers at the creek on the pump but i've got a third one here at the field so the way that this deal works this is like i say kind of makeshift i'll turn this valve on and run that gate valve down to divert the water through this mozzie this is a great big mozzie injector i think that's an inch and a half yeah i'm pretty sure that's an inch and a half mozzie so the water will come in here, we'll divert it around through there to suck chemical up with the mozzie and then it goes out to the field. And when we get done, and um, we will drop the hose in a bucket of clean water to flush all this mess out, suck at least five gallons of clean water through it, and then we can shut this off and run full line pressure about 20 pounds to the field for a while to get all of the stuff in the field clean and we'll be done one other thing that i'm gonna do i got this idea from a friend of mine i think it's a good one i've always spread my annual ryegrass just as soon as we get the plastic laid and try to get it up and going before we plant strawberries but I've always had a major problem with broadleaf weeds later on in the spring after the, the ryegrass has been killed and the strawberries are in the middle of crop. Uh, so this year, instead of doing it that way, I'm gonna let this field lay for a while. We're not in any rush. Uh, we've got plenty of time to get our strawberries uh, before we plant strawberries. So I'm gonna let this lay, hopefully get some rains on it and get all the weed seed out here germinated and I'm gonna come through and spray them and kill them and then hopefully we're gonna have a really clean weed free strawberry year because that should really knock back the weed seed bank in between the rows and we're fixing to annihilate the weed seed bank within the beds by running this vape am. I've had some questions about the vape am that's really the primary reason that I run Vape Am is because it does a pretty decent job on weed seeds. It's not methyl bromide. It's not a miracle like methyl bromide used to be. It doesn't sterilize the soil, but it does a decent job on weeds. And 
I have uh, in the past had a field that was fumigated and I didn't have an, quite enough plastic and I had to come back and lay some more at the, the last minute and we planted it and I got a first hand experience that year with just what Vapam is doing for me so um, the field that had been fumigated was had some weeds in it here and there it wasn't bad but it was enough to make you think I don't know how good this is doing but the part that had not been fumigated you could not by the time the guys got here to weed them you could not find the strawberry plants they were just completely overtaken by broadleaf weeds so this stuff does a pretty dang good job on weeds uh, it's also got some activity on soil borne uh, diseases so it, it kind of I don't really I'm not really up to speed on everything it does for you there um, I think it's pretty good on nematodes. I don't know that I have any nematode issues, but I think it works pretty decent for that as well. Um, I've never used chlorpicrin or telon. I don't have any experience with that. I'm not set up for that. Um, I don't even, I don't have a, a knife or rig on my plastic layer and I wouldn't know what I was doing or even where to buy that stuff. So. Um, I just I know it's pretty dangerous um, which this is also very dangerous that's the reason I'm really not gonna do any filming while I'm uh, fumigating for one I'm not gonna be hanging out out here I mean I have to stay close according to the label uh, to make sure nothing goes wrong but I'm not gonna be hanging out here because once you start running this stuff it stinks to high heaven and I've always kind of figured like with Gramoxone um, if you can smell it, you probably shouldn't be smelling it. So, um, I've got everything here to replace anything that could leak. I did have a leak, a small leak, in this hose going to the field. So, I'm replacing it. Don't want to be running vapam out on the ground. Um, I will double check to, to, that this is completely leak free before I get going. And... Up here we have got kind of a makeshift manifold. This manifold don't fit the field very well, but it's the best I had on hand that we could come up with at the moment. We don't have enough new stuff to put in a, a new 40 row manifold, so we're gonna use this one and get the fumigation done. And then we've got time to, then crunch time will be over and uh, I can gather up some new stuff and we'll put in a brand new proper manifold but I'm gonna get all this mess here hooked up and get the pump going pressure check everything and uh, get this project rolling when you are using a gate valve to regulate your pressure you really got to hang out at the field for a while the first go round to get it dialed in because as the system feels the pressure will continue to climb like it's doing right now so you got to keep just dialing it back a little bit otherwise if you ain't careful you can end up with in my case with the pump I'm running this setup I could end up with 50 or 60 pounds but the drip tape wouldn't last that long before it started blowing apart if it didn't if you're lucky it'll blow fittings blow the tape off the fittings if you're not lucky then it splits strip tape open and keeps splitting it until you it gets rid of enough pressure until it won't bust anymore that's not something you want to do i don't have any leaks and i don't have anything blown apart that's good we had a few of these you can see the wet places that we had to repair right after we first hooked it up we've already checked this one time I just need to check the other end of the field make sure I don't have any problems down there with the caps on the drip tape 
and uh, the guys are just about done with what they're doing they're gonna be out of here for the weekend and um, the place will be vacant so I can get suited up and get my monkey suit on and my gloves and my boots and my mask the uh, Vapam label actually dictates that you have to wear a full face respirator only thing that I mess with that requires that no geysers but moisture and tight lines which is good because we want to make sure we're getting water all the way to the end of the field like we're supposed to be and it appears that we are all right y'all i wrapped this up the system is flushing as we speak i'm running a five gallon bucket of clean water through everything and getting everything all flushed out and we'll shut that down i gotta come back in here one more time all suited up and switch some valves and run clean water for a few minutes it don't take long for all of the system to uh, the water to flush through it right now i'm running a clean five gallon bucket of water through the system and i'm done i got the fumigant recapped sealed up and i'm gonna go take it and put it away and uh one thing i love about this tractor for spraying and for well right now uh is this little feature i don't think a lot of tractors have that and I've been told by at like pesticide meetings and stuff that you have to have this NIOSH filter in your cabin for uh, in order to have a tractor inside a fumigant zone, buffer zone, or um, if you're spraying something that requires a respirator, you either have to have that filter in your cabin air filter or have a uh, respirator on even inside a cab but this tractor I got recirculate and I can attest to the fact that it works cause uh, chemicals like uh, Approvia Top is one example that it just smells extremely strong I don't know it's not I think it's got a caution signal word a zero day pre-harvest interval but um, it just stinks to high heaven and when I'm in here spraying Probia Top, you can't smell it at all because we're just recirculating this air. So I really like that feature a lot. But uh, I, it's about supper time. Sun is setting. I'm done. I'm calling it a day. I appreciate y'all watching. I know there wasn't a whole lot to see here, but uh, maybe you learned something. If you got any questions, drop them in the comments. Appreciate y'all watching.